Hi, so this video is about Julie, um, which is a database that Zimmer and Peacock has developed and it's also about biosensors, which is at the heart of what Zimmer and Peacock does. So I want to talk about the entire workflow from a biosensor through Julie and into a final um, application. So the first thing to say at Zimmer and Peacock, we make um, biosensors. It's just a cartoon to kind of represent that biosensor. Now the kind of biosensors we um, manufacture often give out a um, signal which can be something like voltage or um, amps or impedance because we're electrochemists we tend to sort of you know um, work in these kind of um, properties so biosensor which gives out a raw signal which is often um, millivolts now at ZP we're very unusual that you know people will um, produce biosensors but they may not um, understand the electronics behind biosensors but at ZP we're quite unusual like that because in fact we can also work on the um, analog front end and convert the signal which is essentially analog into digital now the next part of the journey for the data is often um, these days uh, it's transmitted to the cloud so GSM and LARA WAN would be the kind of um, um, kind of um, protocols uh, Bluetooth is obviously also very popular, but I suppose when we were putting together these slides, we were kind of thinking of more in-field um, applications, be it agriculture um, or aquaculture. So you have the biosensor, which gives a, a raw signal. In this case, I've said millivolts. So this is kind of like an iron selective type electrode. And then there's a conversion of the millivolts into, um, into a digital um, output. And then that is actually transmitted, as I th say, through um, the mobile phone network or potentially through LoRaWAN. Now, what makes starts to make ZP very different is, you know, there are companies that do biosensors and there are companies that can do the electronics. Um, and then there's other companies then that are sort of, you know, we'll talk about the sort of um, the cloud database part of this. But ZP again is different that we've actually got the, um, something we call Julie. You can sign up for Julie. Um, online it's free to um, access and at the time of um, preparing this particular video Julie is very good at receiving so you can upload um, electrochemical data it's very good at analyzing electrochemical data it's very good at doing statistical analysis on electrochemical data and actually it's getting very good at for example doing equivalent circuits and interpretation of um, impedance data so Julie is a cloud database for the uploading, analysis, sharing of electrochemical data. So we have kind of that in um, in hand. Now, what Julie is allowing us to do then is to sort of essentially process data which originated as electrochemical data. Now it's gone from the biosensor where we've originally collected it through this analog to digital converter, which is the electronics we've transmitted to Julie, and then Julie. Um, what allows us to sort of filter the data and then to start doing corrections or correlations with the data. Um, so things like temperature, humidity. Now Julie also has the capability of receiving data from other sources. You know, so we can have our biosensor data coming in there, which is the kind of heart of what we do at ZP. But sometimes you want to correlate um, biosensor raw data with um, metadata. You know, so in the examples of agriculture and aquaculture, what was the air temperature at the time or what was the humidity at the time? So Julia starts to allow us to um, amalgamate these data sets and start to look at correlations between these data sets. Now, the end user, um, the real person, be it a farmer or be it it's the, um, you know, the, um, the fish farmer, be it you know it could be a medical application they don't want to see this raw data so um, and also I suppose this also talks to um, food technologists who could also be using this kind of data um, so what we have is we have an API that will actually take the data from Julie and then put it into a um, associate a graphical user interface or an, a new a different app um, and this app could be either be under our control or it could be one of our partners apps but essentially Julie, you can take the data and the manipulation of data from Julie and then start porting it into um, third party uh, applications where the data is sort of 
delivered as information in a more meaningful way. So for example, if it's a farmer who wants to know the nitrate in his soil, he's not looking at millivolt data. He's actually looking at um, data that's been corrected and is showing his nitrate in his um, field as a function of ppm per hectare um, and it will show a time course you know how this date how this nitrate is going up and down um, in probably in response to um, the application of fertilizer so in this um, sort of quick slide I wanted I really wanted to just to explain the entire workflow that at ZP it's not just about the biosensor because you've got to get the data which is requires electronics we think in this uh, Internet of Things world, you've got to get the data up to the cloud. We then have a cloud to receive the data and to manipulate the data and to maybe amalgamate that data with um, data that's available from other sources. And then finally, we're using APIs, we can move it into a third party um, product where the data can be kind of displayed to the end user in a way that's sort of more meaningful really display the data as information upon which the user can then um, interact. So just wanted to make this video to kind of explain ZP is really part of the entire workflow from, from raw signal through to actual information and we have the sensors, we have the um, electronics, we have the Julie um, database and then essentially we work with clients um, and partners and collaborators who actually want to make that final product where the data can be sort of on the smartphone and can be meaningful to the final um, user. Okay, so I appreciate, um, if you've got any comments, just contact us at Zimmer and Peacock. Okay, thanks very much.